Hello guys, Louis here and welcome back to a brand new video. Now in today's video, we're going to be looking at how you can achieve this sort of gritty, grungy effect on your typography. Basically what we're going to be doing is like really messing up those edges and just sort of making it look a little bit dirty and adding in that ink bleed effect. I see this effect used all the time on Instagram and I haven't really seen anyone sort of explaining how it's done. I'm sure there's a few different ways of doing this and achieving a similar sort of effect, but in this video I'll be showing the way that I would do it and the way I approach it. It really adds a little bit of character to your typography and it is very very easy to do just before we get in why not why not give me a little subscribe give me a little like you know so first things first let's open up our Photoshop so I'm just gonna create a a4 document landscape so we've got the Photoshop document open basically you can drop in any graphic or any image or any text custom text whatever you want and this effect will apply so let's start off by just writing some simple text and writing something that's a little bit dirty Uh, you came for the design, but you're staying for the bands, let's be honest. Okay, so I'm going to create some text and I'm just going to write dirty type. Cool, and I'm going to center that. You can change this at any point because what we're going to do now is just convert that to a smart object. So once that's a smart object, you can jump in that at any point in time, change it, and it will reapply the effects anyway for you. So I'm actually going to jump into this now and I'm just going to sort out the space on this. It's a little bit dodged. Right, so save that and go back to the original file. Now we're ready to apply some of our effects. So you've got your text all lovely and clean, but we want to start gritting that up, grunging that up, and really start messing with those edges. So first thing you want to do is simply just go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, Gaussian blur. I don't know how to say it. I don't think anyone really does. But yeah, so this is going to basically determine how much the text is kind of going to bleed into each other. I'm just going to leave it at whatever it is on now, 16.2, and we can always go back and make changes once we can see sort of the full picture, what's actually happening with this text. So just gonna press OK, and then I'm going to go to adjustments and drop a little threshold on. So as you can see already, it started to sort of distort the text and make it sort of look like it's melting, it's bleeding. Um, and we can change that by upping or lowering the thresholds. Also, we can go back to our blur and lower that or up that. And you're going to be able to see how this is really starting to play with the edges of those type and how it allows those sort of letters to blend in together and melt in together. So I want mine to sort of bleed quite a bit. So I'm going to up it just a little bit and that's too there we go you can see like between the p and the e and the d and the i it's starting to bleed into each other a little bit cool and then we can always just sort of mess with the threshold a little bit to sort of bleed it in a little bit more like that that's looking good that's sort of looking like it's been stamped like it's been pressed in so now we're going to want to go back to our dirty type layer and go to filter distort ripple now what this is going to do is start to add Oh, I'm zooming in there, is start to add a bit of a ripple to the edges of our design. So as you can see here and here, if I up this, it's starting to ripple it. So what we all want to achieve from this is basically make like the edges look as if they're not perfectly straight. You know, if it's been stamped, it's not going to be perfect. There's going to be ink that's going to bleed slightly off. So we're going to want to try and replicate that effect. We don't want to be as harsh as this. So if I press OK, as you can see, the edges there are quite wild we don't really want it to be that intense and obviously the size is going to have a major effect on that as well but i think medium is sort of the best for this by all means feel free to sort of experiment and play around to see if anything else sort of works for you obviously different designs will show this a little bit differently so yeah feel free to have a little play around but i'm going to just keep this at medium and i'm going to just only put it on like 40 percent so you can see at the edges already here are a little bit wobbly a little bit of damage to the sides so when we zoom out it already doesn't look look perfect which is what we want to achieve now the next step is pretty much the most important step we want to now basically apply a displacement map and what a displacement map does is it allows the text or the graphic or whatever you've got to sort of take the shape of the map that's below it and it's actually quite a cool tool that like I don't I never really use other than like creating distorted type or messing with text I never really use it in another functional way but it is perfect for this sort of effect and to achieve these sort of results so what you're going to want to do for this and what you're going to want to have on hand is a sort of damaged texture something that's a little bit gritty something that's got some rough elements going on a little bit 
of grain and yeah, so some damage. So I'll show you what I mean as an example. So I'm going to create myself a new document, just another A4 document, the same size as my previous one that the, the previous document that I was making with the text. Just make yourself a completely new document and you're going to want to find yourself this damaged texture. So as you can see here, I've just dropped in this um, sort of scratched film texture. It's got a lot of grain on it. It's got a lot of scratches. And I bought this one from iStock. I have a couple of textures that I just use regularly that I've just thought I might as well buy. But there's loads and loads of free ones that you can find online if you wanted to, you know, you didn't want to pay for it. But if not, you can always go out and take your own one. But yeah, there are a lot of a lot of free ones online. But basically what we're doing with this is the image is now going to start taking shape over the top of this damaged texture. So we kind of want to get the most damaged area. I'm going to zoom that in. And the contrast of the image as well is going to have an effect. But we can also go back to this at a later point if we want to sort of make it a bit more intense. So I'm just going to save this document and save it into my file because I'm going to need that for the next step. Cool. So then we're back in our original dirty type file. So after creating that grungy texture file, we can click on our type, go to filter, uh, distort and displace. Bring up some options here. It doesn't really matter too much that's fine press ok and it will give you the option to select a file as a displacement map so i'm just going to select this gritty map which is the file that i just created with that just simple gritty texture in it and as i press open you can see it's already started to take shape around the edges and added in some little damage specs and that sort of thing it's starting to come into the end of the y there and you can see some damage here and you can see some like little flicks coming off and it really starts to add a little bit more personality a little bit more grunge into your graphic or type so so I've still got my file open, my displacement map, so I can actually just drag things in, save it, and it'll update in here, and you can sort of see how the different textures affect the text. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump online and see if I can find a texture that's free and see how that sort of affects this type. So I just found this image on Unsplash and it's by Annie Spratt. And uh, as you can see, it's just a free grungy texture that has a lot of contrast in it. And that's kind of what you want. And I've just dragged it back into my file. And if I go ahead and hit save in my displacement map file and then go back to my main file and I'm going to need to just turn it off and turn it back on again. So it updates. You can see because it's quite intense, this has damaged it quite a bit. So what we can do to lower that is go back to our displacement map and just make sure the contrast isn't as high. So we can lower that contrast quite a bit, maybe lower the brightness a little bit like that and if we save this go back into our original file and just turn off the displacement map and turn it back on you can see it's not as intense uh, but it still has that damaged edge it's starting to look proper dirty the edges are a little bit messed up and the text is sort of bleeding off taking that damaged effect underneath I don't really want this for my one I've got my own little damaged scratch thing going on here uh, so I'm gonna just save that again I could make it a little bit more intense uh, by up in the blur depending on how much I want to do there just have a little look at my threshold, see how that's making it bleed a bit, can turn it up or down. Yeah, I'm very happy with how grungy this is looking and how this is turning out. So the hardest part of this really is saving this and exporting this as a transparent file and applying textures over the top because the way that threshold works, it relies on that, that white background to sort of apply this effect. But with the transparency and without the white background, the threshold layer doesn't work. So a quick way around this, and this is again, there's, I'm sure there's lots of other ways to do this. It's a bit more simple and clean, but this is the way I've always done it. We can just highlight both of our layers here and stick them in one folder, create a solid color, a solid black layer, press OK and hide that. And then we can just go up to select color range and we can select the shadows. So this is gonna only select this black area here and we're gonna be able to mask out this white area. So just press okay on that, make sure both are set to zero. And as you can see, it's made a selection just over that black text. So we can turn off our layers here and turn on our black layer. And then when we click on our mask here, we can press command I, which will invert the mask, deselect, and then we can just invert the whole mask again. So now if you can see, if we turn off the background, we have this sort of distorted type um, and it's completely isolated, there's no background and it's just the type. So we can resize this, make it as small as we want, do whatever we want to it. And we can also just change the color if you wanted to in this part, which is, uh, yeah, decent. So say you wanted to make any changes at this point, you don't like it, you wanna do more, whatever, you can always just delete that, go back to your type, make sure your background's on so you can see the effect, go into your smart object and uh, make your changes, it will make your changes here and then go back to select color range, 
select all those dark areas and then just create a mask on a new fill layer. It's very simple, very, very easy to do. It literally will take you five minutes. And there's also ways that you can automate stuff in Photoshop. So if this was um, an effect that you were doing on a regular basis and you didn't want to do this each time you sort of opened a file, you could easily automate this in a few steps and then you'll be able to save that automation and just apply that to any of your smart objects in the future. And it will just apply this effect straight away without you having to do any work. You do it once and then you never have to do it again sort of thing. Alternatively, you can just save this file as a template file and then just go back to your smart object and drop your own artwork in there and then just export it from there after you've done it on your on your fill layer. For any artwork that you put in that, that reacts a little bit different, you can just make changes to any of the effects. If you've got a better texture that you want to use or you want to try out different textures, you can just go back to your displacement map file, drop that in and then make sure you turn it off and on again so it uploads it or updates it even. And yeah, and you can really play around with it and really sort of make it personal to whatever your work is. Obviously, depending on how bold something is, or what graphic you're using, the effect is gonna sit differently. So you're gonna to wanna to play around with it a little bit. But yeah, so that's basically it for that. And obviously now we can take this because it's isolated and start overlaying it on some textures and make it look like it's really bleeding on a bit of paper and it's been stamped on sort of thing. So again, there's loads and loads of free textures online, but I also do recommend actually buying stuff. from. If you see any designers that have like a good texture pack, it's always very, very beneficial to have some of those under your belt. I'm gonna drag in a texture that I previously bought, again, off of iStock. Um, but yeah, there are free ones you can use. So as you can see, I have dropped in this sort of wheat pasted paper texture uh, into the background. And I'm gonna to wanna to make this look like the ink is sort of bleeding into the paper a little bit and it's sort of stamped on. I'm actually gonna to wanna to do this in reverse. I'm gonna quickly go to this layer and I'm gonna invert this. And I'm just going to clip that to that one below. And I'm going to add an adjustment and I'm just going to desaturate that just so there's no green in there. It's sort of just black. Obviously, this looks a bit weird because all the highlights are now on the bottom side. So I can just flip, flip that round like so. Press OK. And there I've got a nice black texture instead of the white one, which is very nice. So I can click on my little square here, my little fill layer and change that to white. So we're gonna wanna add a little bit more texture in there because at the moment it just sort of looks like it's floating in front. It doesn't really look like it's actually been printed on the bit of paper. So again, there are a lot of ways to do this. You can sort of select all the highlights um, from the image behind and sort of overlay just those over the top and the same with the shadows. So it looks a little bit more realistic, but a really quick way which it does the job quickly, but it's not the most professional way, is just by duplicating the texture, bringing it to the top of your layers, create a clipping mask, just so it clips over the top. And because my paper's already white anyway, it's gonna clip to that text. And you can see a lot of these textures are coming through on the top, on the top there. Say you wanted this to be yellow, you could just make your text yellow, go to your texture that's above, and just have a look at what blending options are really gonna allow that to come through. So on here, darken, it's gonna be different for depending on what color, but for here, darken works pretty well. It's starting to look like it's properly stamped on there. You can see a lot of these textures coming through on the text as well. So like top of the Y, especially there, we can obviously change the color and it's still gonna apply that effect over the top. So I wanna keep mine as white. So that's pretty much it guys. It's very simple and very easy to apply. Hopefully you guys have learned something by following this process. If you do wanna do this again, you can pretty much just use this file that you've started as a template file and just go back in and switch out your stuff. And hopefully after following these steps, you understand the process. A lot of people ask me for the project files every video. If this video gets a thousand likes, I know that's <laughs> a little bit optimistic, then I'll upload this project file for you guys to download. So that way you can sort of just see what I've done in here and pick it apart and play around with it. Yeah, even, even less effort for that. So I know a lot of you have been doing it already, but tag me in anything on City Solar Club and I'll make sure to share it on my story if I see you guys using any of the tutorials that I've got on, on my YouTube. But yeah, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again soon with a new video. So yeah, take care, have fun, be safe. See you later.